Incredible morning. Hello, hello, hello. Incredible morning, everyone. Oh, <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Oh, excuse me. So um, today um, we are going to talk about our tacky sublimation paper. I do believe I've done a video um, somewhat on this, but I normally go and end up answering a bunch of other questions. So I wanted a title video. I want it to be just about tacky sublimation paper so that um, it's just there. It's clear and concise. I can make sure that I send that one. It has just information on tacky sublimation paper. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video. If you um, have an interest in the tacky sublimation paper, stick around. I'll give you all the information, all the deets on it um, and what it's used for where is it going to be beneficial for you? How does it compare to our fast dry paper? All right. So I am Shakia, the professor, owner of HS Inc. 365. We are the parent company of Silaholic Synonymous, which is my online platform as of now uh, that teaches you how to use Silhouette Studio as well as the various Silhouette machines. Um, and then we also have, honestly speaking, which that's the product line that carries the tacky sublimation paper, okay? And we also have, like I said, the fast dry. We have, um, uh, we have, uh-oh, hold on. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Um, and then we also have sublimation ink, sublimation, I mean, sublimation ink, pigment ink, and, um, a lot more. Okay. Okay. No, that was for something else. Okay. That's an order that I have to do today. I was like, wait a minute. All right. Um, okay. And also 365 Creative Academy, which someone was actually asking about that. That's with my online academy where I teach a wide variety of things from all things like creative and custom, like learning how to customize and personalize things using Silhouette Studio. Um, I teach about uh, creative business and how to efficiently and effectively run a creative business. All June, July, and August, we're talking about pricing and profits in my creative business, which anyone can join. Um, just check out our website to take part of that. Where we're, like I said, we're going to talk about pricing and um, profit, and I'm going to have another video where we talk about that. I'm going to give you a little more detail of how those classes are going to go. And so much other stuff that I do over on 365 Creative Academy. All right, but like I said in this video, we are going to talk about tacky sublimation paper. What is it? What is its purpose? Um, and how do you use it? All right. So, tacky sublimation paper. What is it? So, in the package, and when you take it out of the package, so all our, so you'll know if you have the tacky like in the package based off of this. So our tacky one has this going down the side. Fast dry does not. And the yellow looks a little bit different. The color's a little bit different on that too. All right. When looking at, let's say, if you don't have the cover sheet in there, uh, you didn't mark your bag. One of the things that I recommend is to leave it in the bag or leave it in the box. Ooh, let me grab my marker. Hold on. And once you get it, sorry about all the rattling. One of the things that can be very helpful is to write on the back one indicating that it is tacky but also that this is the print i'm sorry hold on this is the non-print side so when it's in here this is the non-print side so you can either write tacky and then you know you wrote the tacky on the back so when you're taking it out this is the non-print side or you can write on the front um, you know, because you've taken this out so you won't even see this and then put tacky print side. OK, it is just like our fast drive in that it does have a rough 
surface to the front. However, it feels a little smoother than the fast dry, but you can rub your fingers on it. And well, I know for me, I can clearly tell which side is the print side and which side is not because it just sounds different. You can rub your hands and you can hear that side. This one, print side, non-print side, okay? And then just simply looking at it, the tacky paper has a bit of a shine on the print side. The back side, well, I guess the back side has a little bit of a shine as well, but I don't know, to me, the print side has more of a shine than the other side. Same thing with the fast dry. In, um, other way you can tell too is don't do it too much because the moisture can mess up like the print. Um, but if you have like, if you want to kind of maybe put it inside of the box and put all print sides up. Here's my recommendation on how to store it. If you, know, you don't have the bag, if you want to put it, like leave it in the box or put it somewhere, right? If you have a printer that has a front tray and you're putting your sublimation paper in the front tray, I recommend storing your paper print side down. Print side down. That way you pick it up, however many sheets, um, I have a bunch of them in there at one time. I don't have to do like the one by one by one. So you're going to take out of your package. You're going to lay it right into the tray. Okay. So if you're doing, if you kind of uh, have a front tray, you use that more often, take it out, drop it right down in the tray. Now, not to say that you can't do that for the rear feet. I mean, you take it out and then you flip it to put it inside the rear feed. But if your printer is only a rear feed, um, unless you're worried about like, depending if you're gonna try and store it where dust and stuff can get on it, if you store it top side up, you're just gonna grab a few sheets and put it right in your rear feed. So that's a little tip as far as storing it. If you have a hard time telling the two, store it how you will remember. Uh, print side down or print side up. Once you know which side is the print side, you decide which way is best for you. But if you store it and you remember how you store it, that's going to be the best way to remember versus like touching and feeling. But you can take your finger and it will stick on both the fast dry and this one. On this side, it's not going to stick at all. So you can take a little bit of a little moisture from your tongue and tap it against it and you'll be able to tell what is the tacky side versus, or the print side. So on, even on the fast dry, you can do that test. That tells you the print side versus the non-print side, all right? Um, so storage and how to tell it, right? How to tell it apart. At the end, I'm gonna go over some suggested print settings. I can only give you suggested print settings for an Epson printer. I have not set up my sawgrass. I do not have an F5. 70 or an F170. So I don't have like, it's not settings that I have tested in my Facebook group. Honestly speaking, sub, um, honestly speaking, 365, the best automation group on Facebook. Yes. That is the whole name. <laughs> um, uh, if you search Shawnee Douglas, she commented under someone's post. And so she shows you what settings she uses and she has an F570. All right. So let's talk about why do we have this? What is it for? What is it used for? All right. Before we get into that, make sure that you guys give this video a thumbs up. Make sure that you guys have also shared this video out. I actually forgot to share it out myself. So we're going to take a little moment to go ahead and share out the video. So let me go over here to Facebook. If you're watching on Facebook, just hit share. Simply share it out to uh, submission groups that you're in. Um, if you're on YouTube, you can hit share and share it to your story, share it to your page. You never know um, who might need this information because I'm pretty sure we have all befriended some, you know, crafty and creative friends. So if they don't know about this information, you might want to share it with them, you know, to help them out. All right. Um, let's go here. And what is tacky submission paper? 
And let's go share. Get ready to unlock the full power. Why do they always, I have to remember to do my thumbnails. They always have me looking crazy. About how. Okay. And select all, copy, host, share again, share to a group, east and Okay, all shared out to all the places that I can share to. Okay, um, so what is it? What is it used for? I'm going to take you guys over to our website real quick. Okay. And I'm going to go up here to paper, tacky sublimation paper, and we're going to come over here. And right here, it lets you know that this is for fabric and textile substrates only. Fabric and textile substrates only is what it's going to stick to. Have I ever used it on a hard substrate? Yes. The glitter... Uh, tumblers. I've used it on that. No problems whatsoever. It's actually so beautiful. It was actually probably better than the regular sublimation paper. I have not done it on a regular tumbler, I don't believe. Um, I've pressed it with um, like on my, what's this thing called? What's this thing called? <laughs> License tag. Um, I mean, it transfers, but you can see like the indentions of the paper. I've used it on some other substrates like MDF. Some of them, you know, you can see like the ind indentations of the tacky. Some of them you can't. So on the safe side, it is made for fabrics and textiles. So soft substrates. So that's your shirts. Uh, you have can coolers. Um, you have graduation stoles. You have pillowcases, um, uh, um, rags, uh, what else? Uh, anything like the neoprene type stuff, because that really is a lot of times just uh, polyester fabric over that. So uh, juice, juice bottles, um, baby blankets, canvas bags. Um, let's see, what else have I used it on? Uh, mask. So it, like I said, anything that's fabric, textile, stuff like that, you can use it on there. The other, like the only thing that's like non-fabric that I personally have used it on is glitter cardstock. Only because um, I started using it doing uh, senior crowns. And that is really, really long. And I didn't want to have to piece it together as far as the print. So I use my tacky summation paper for that. And But because that has texture to it, it works perfectly fine, okay? And as you can see, we have it in every single size and we have the same bundles um, like we do with our fast dry, okay? And by the case. All right, so fabric and textiles only is what it is for. As you can see, it is not sticky straight out of the package. It is not sticky. It is not tacky straight out of the package. What happens with this is once you press it to your substrate, the heat and the pressure will, uh, like, will make it to where it sticks to it. Now, there are certain fabrics where it will automatically stick to it. It sticks to like my satins uh, when I'm doing like pillowcases, if I'm doing the um, graduation stoles, like that really shiny one, 
it sticks to it. I never really have to pre-press it. I'm spoiled <laughs> by our fast dry where I don't really pre-press. I personally don't really use the tacky paper for like shirts and like stuff like that. I only got it for piecing together a large, sub like the oversized sublimation shirts. I got it for, like I said, my glitter card stock um, and things like that. And then of course, graduation stoles. That's what I mainly used it for. I don't use it every day or whenever I'm doing um, shirts, I don't use it. I don't feel a need to use it. Our fast dry is amazing. Our fast dry, it's not about the ink release. Our fast dry completes the sublimation process to where there's not very much gassing off. So short of your paper moving as you were bringing down your press, that's the only thing. But that can happen with this paper too. So if you put it down and before it tacks, like it shifts, you can still get ghosting. But if you go and you bring it down, um, it's going to stick to your shirt and it's going to lessen the likelihood that you're going to get shifting, which will cause ghosting. However, as I mentioned before, our paper is, it's not, if you guys see like, I don't promote the whole, it's the, you know, their ink release and this, that, and the third. Of course, the ink release is going to be amazing. I mean, you have some papers where it seems like there's so much paper still left on, on I mean, so much ink still left on the paper, but your print looks beautiful. Well, one, it dyes that paper somewhat and it, because there's so much there, it can still gas off. And a lot of times that's why, like, if you lift up, you have like too much pressure or you have an auto press and you lift it up and it moves, you're going to get that shifting and that can cause ghosting after the fact, right? Well, our paper, it completes the summation process to where it's not really gassing off. I've gone and I've moved my paper around. As soon as it comes up, move it around. Never do you see another print, like another um, impression or like another print or a ghosted print, a light print. Um, then also the paper kind of domes up once you like release the pressure kind of domes up. So that keeps it from like really, really tight, like going and still staying on your substrate. So fast dry works great. I personally use fast dry for um, my shirts and stuff like that. Unless it's like an all over, like an oversized, then I'll use a tacky and I'll explain why. But with the tacky, you get the tack after you press. 93.65%, y'all know how I like branding and keeping on numbers and keeping on brand. I'm not going to say like that's like the actual number, but you know, you get the gist that the majority of the fabrics you are going to have to pre-press to remove any moisture. If there's moisture there, this will not stick. This will not stick. If there is moisture, I learned the hard way because I'm so used to not pre-pressing with fast dry because it's not, you know, I, it's not required. Now, if I don't need it to tack, I don't care about pre-pressing it. But if I'm doing something like a graduation stove, I'm doing an all over shirt because I don't want it to lift and I want to be able to put it back down into place. I need to pre-press it like because um, I move. I don't use a hard board. I just put my shirts right under the heat press and I just move it around. So I need it to stick so that when I move it, that part that I already press, it stays stuck down and I don't have to worry about it shifting and making my um, my letters or my images shift. So that's what I mainly use it um, like I mainly use it for. And like I said, you have to pre-press to remove the moisture so that it can actually stick. I learned the hard way because I'm so used to not um, pre-pressing with our fast dry. It just cuts the time. Our fast dry is amazing. I don't have to pre-press. I don't have to lint brush because I press at 365, 30 seconds. So I don't get the blue squiggly lines. I don't get ghosting. It's like very, very, like very rare that I'll ever get ghosting unless like I'm hesitating and like, not quite sure. And I pull it down kind of slow or maybe I mean, I've had times where I completely lifted it up and put it back down because it wasn't like enough pressure and still no ghosting whatsoever. If you watch my video from whenever we went, we were in the bubble 
and the Heat made the you know the finals. Yes, but no, we didn't this year. Please don't bring it up. Um, I know, although I I just brought it up. Um, I had a shirt and it was on a cricket shirt, and I did not like the way that it looked. Like it just did not. I've never been a fan of cricket shirts, right? I perfectly lined it back up and pressed it, and it was amazing. Like no ghosting, like no nothing. It was absolutely frigid amazing. So I've gone and lifted up, put it back down and haven't had to worry about ghosting like that. So fast dry, amazing. Some people like the, um, the security blanket of knowing that it's not going to move. Now with that, there are, there are a lot of pros to it, but there are some cons to it, especially when using a desktop printer. Um, traditionally the tacky papers were made for that. They're made for textiles. They're made to press to like for cut and sew, pressing to just straight up fabric or even pressing to, um, the all over shirts. Like, you know, even though they're put together, you have the big press. Traditionally they're made for the large format Epson printers. Here's the thing that you need to know, like what's the major difference between, us trying to convert printers or use desktop printers and a large format. On desktop printers, because there you'll get to a point where your paper is in that print well, it needs something to hold it in place. If not, it's just going to move. So there are pinwheels in the front. Once you print, it goes under those pinwheels. On a large format printer, once print, once ink hits that paper, nothing ever touches it again. It does not go through a set of pinwheels because it's on a roll and that is what's holding it in place. Once it gets to a certain point, you cut it off. That paper is still underneath that, like the, um, underneath the printer, like ready to print underneath the print head. So it doesn't have a situation where the end of the paper is just going to be loose. So it does not have those pinwheels at all on there. Unless you have one that has like a little slot where you can put sheets of paper, there's probably like a few pinwheels and things in there because you need to have those to hold the paper in place. Um, now, you can choose to, let's say, there's about like um, whatever the width is inside your middle part, whatever that is, you'll have to use that. So let's say the 13, like let's say the width of the inside part is like this, using 13 by 19 paper. If you want, you can, like if you don't have pinwheels in there, you can print from here down so that this part is still underneath like the back pinch wheels and you can print up to like here and then you won't have to worry about any pinwheels getting on it. But I wouldn't recommend it. Most people want to take full advantage of like their paper. So it's going to consistent, constantly move around and you're going to end up with a bunch of messed up prints. So large format printers, um, they can take a lot of ink on it. The tacky, the um, what's on here that makes it tacky is something where the ink is not going to absorb into this paper. The ink is not going to like fully absorb into this paper because there is a coating on top. So when you have a printer that has the pinwheels on it, it has to dry fairly quickly to avoid having the pinwheel marks on it. But on a traditional large format, because nothing touches it, once ink is on it, they can print that at a much higher ink saturation. On a desktop printer, you cannot print with a high ink saturation. Um, we're going to go over print settings. I'm trying to think what else was there, um, as far as like uses and like just general knowledge of it. I think that's pretty much it on there. Um, as far as like usage, pros and cons of it and whatnot. All right. So going into print settings and why print settings are so important is because of, like I said, the, it will go through print wheels. I mean, it go through the pinwheels, which means it has to dry before it hits that. If not, those pinwheels are going to pick up that ink. It is going to pick up the ink 
from where the print is. So you're going to be left with white dots. And once it gets to a white section or a lighter section, it is going to transfer to those spots. Okay. So you have to change and adjust your print settings just a little bit. Okay. We're going to go back over to my screen and actually, you know what? I don't have to really do this. Um, well, you know what? I will still, let's go here. All right. I'm actually going to just do this like this. All right. So as you guys know, we go to you choose your printer, you go to preferences. I forgot I had these slides still. Here, everything is still the same. We're going to go plain paper, bright white. I personally go to more settings uh, because the printer that I use, it has that option. If not, you're going to just go to high if that's all yours has. Um, and then you're going to, okay, I take mine up to quality. If not, yours might just be at high. Um, and then we're going to go to the next one. Quiet mode is on. And then here, high speed doesn't really matter. Um, what high speed does is it tells the printer whether or not you want it to put ink down in both directions as the print head goes back and forth or only one direction. Now, one might say if you only have it go in one direction, it gives it more time to um, kind of more time to dry when you're really thinking about it. So you're going to think like, okay, it's going to go this way. It has to come back, but it's coming back so fast that really can't dry. It has to go over pretty much that same area, like again, to get that full, like the full color. So as it goes back, and then comes, and then it's going to move just a little bit. So it's only going to put ink down going from right to left instead of right to left and left to right. So if it goes like this and put inks down this way, it's going to start to move. It's about the same. So that's why I say like in this case, it doesn't really matter because the printer is, they're so small that that head moves was very, 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 very fast. Um, and it, even if you have like an image, like right here, it's just going to go do, 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 do in that area. But you look at like a printer, like a Roland, which is one directional, it's going to go all the way across, no matter what. Now, if it was doing that to give it time to dry, because it's going to go all the way across, it would be great, but that's also going to take a really long time. All right. So high speed, you can leave it unchecked or checked. Um, and you can see for yourself if it makes a big difference for you. And then here, I personally use Adobe RGB 1.8. This density right here, I find doesn't really matter. I've taken this actually back to zero, but this is where it's important. Right now it says negative five. This is based off of my fast drive. What you will have to do if you find that you are still getting pizza pinwheels, you're going to take this level, like this slider and take it down or type in right here. For the tacky paper, it's going to be negative 15 or lower. And what that is doing is it's just not putting as much ink down on the paper, but your prints are still going to be absolutely frigid amazing. But it's not print, putting down as much ink on the paper. So with tacky, this is an old slide, but with tacky, you want to take this down to negative, start at negative 15 and then make any adjustments that you need to. Like, let's say if when you're doing reds or you're doing blues, you find that you still get it when it's at negative 15, take it down by increments of two. This is, everyone's printer is different. I'm pretty sure you've seen in groups and just how so one person says this setting works. Somebody else says this settings work. It's all about your printer, the age of your printer. What are the, how are the dampers on your printer? So many factors. So this is not something that anyone can give you like the exact number to put on there. You're going to have to figure that out. You guys have to put in some work to troubleshoot and to figure out your equipment. Everyone's equipment is going to be different. Yes, we sell it, but no, I cannot give you all the answers. And the answers that I do have is because I've gone in and I've tested, I've sacrificed paper, I've gotten um, 
uh, 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 what's those things called? Um, scrap fabric. And I've done tests. So I can give you a roundabout and a general number. But for your specific, if my numbers are not working for you, then you will have to do your own testing. I have tested for my printer and my heat press. Okay. So this number here, you want to take it down. Now I'm going to go back up to here. Not this one. Well, yeah, but not that one. Where is it? Do I see? Oh, I don't have the actual drop down. So right here where it says plain paper, bright white, I'm going to take that off. We're going to go back over to here. You're not going to see it as big because that was a screenshot, but we're going to go to print preferences. Oops, wrong printer. Cancel. Let's go up here. Preferences. Right here where it says paper type. If you want to use premium mat or presentation paper mat, depending on which printer you have. If you want to use that setting, let's actually go to my 2720 because it just says, so you have presentation paper mat and premium presentation paper mat. I don't really recommend using premium presentation paper mat because it's going to put down a lot, a lot of ink. And most people say to go to high. It's going to put down too much ink for our paper. It's going to put down too much ink for our paper. If you want to use um, premium mat, you're going to choose that. Leave it on standard. Leave it on standard. And once you do, like you said that, under maintenance, under extended settings, you're going to have to take your print density down significantly like negative 20, negative 25, maybe even lower than that because premium presentation paper mat naturally puts down more ink. It will do two to three passes over the exact same area. So it's putting down way, way more ink. That's where your higher resolution comes in, which is what you need for regular prints. But for sublimation, because it's not what you see is what you get, once you go and you press it, most times, like uh, for hard substrates, you might be able to see it, but I have found that none of my customers have ever, ever said anything about it. They're not paying that much attention to it. But on like fabrics, you don't even see that at all. Hard substrates is a little bit less forgiving. But if you're wanting to use premium matte, I know that I have to use it sometimes. Other people say they can use plain paper and they get great blacks. I don't know why my blacks just don't act right on plain paper setting. So whatever I'm doing, glossy tumblers only. If I do glitter tumblers, if I do matte tumblers, if I do mugs, I can stay at plain paper and I have amazing blacks. But for glossy tumblers only, I personally now use premium matte and I just have to take my density down um, whenever I'm doing that with sublimation also, you're going to have to consistently clean or constantly clean your rollers. It is a part of regular maintenance. If you guys don't like cleaning your rollers, oh, this team too much. I'm going to tell you right now, don't bother to ever get a large format and a commercial printer because you have regular maintenance daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annually that you have to do on these big ones to keep them running. And they cost a hell of a lot more money than these small ones. So if you're someone that doesn't like the maintenance and simply just cleaning your rollers or doing a print head cleaning and stuff like that, you're not going to survive when it comes to large format printers. You, a lot of people want to get into DTF. You're not going to survive because that requires maintenance. Um, so I have to clean my rollers um, with using the paper. That's just a part of periodic, like that's just a part of regular maintenance when using a desktop printer that has pinwheels. It is going to pick up ink. Even on my pigment ink printer, I clean my pinwheels. All right. Um, so we went over what it's used for. Well, how to tell which side is which what it's used for, print settings, and some like pros and cons. 
If there are any questions, I'll answer a few questions, but I don't want this to be super, super long. We're already at 35 minutes just simply talking about paper, but I wanted you guys to have all of the information about tacky sublimation paper. Um, I don't, so I'm not in a position, like not say position, but I have no interest right now in large format printers. Like I'm okay. I've, everybody knows that I am team small. To me, it's a lot easier to do things, uh, to get things out. I feel like I make way more money with the smaller items. I have no desire to really get into the large ones. I don't know them off the top of my head. I have a list of them. So when I'm doing my classes, I list them, but I don't know them off the top of my head. So I would have to come back and kind of let you know. But um, like Shannon, she talks about large format printers. Um, she doesn't do like YouTube videos, but she's on like Facebook. I know she has a large format one because she's like, well, you need to get the large paper on the rows. So uh, Chandra Blow, she has a large format. Maybe she can tell you like some numbers um, as far as especially the converted ones. And it's like not meant for sublimation and you're getting like the third party cartridges. I don't really dabble in that at all because I personally at this juncture of my business, I have no desire to get a large format printer. I will outsource all day, every day for larger prints. Oh, my girl, Christina from, oh my God, what is it? Uh, well, I can't think, 901? Is it 901 prints or something like that? Custom, something like that? I gotta remember. But she knows a lot about the large format prints because she got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> um, oh, yes, I'm so glad I saw that. We carry this um, in sheets because you guys requested it but i mainly use the rolls so we do carry it in rolls as well which i don't have not one in here probably because i was out there cutting it but we do sell it in the rolls as well so print rolls sub uh, excellent using the f570 as well as the sheets i also own a sawgrass 800 the sheets work better than the suggested paper in my opinion thank you so much for that hey just say all right let's see i'm in the pro process of purchasing the f570 pro and i plan on using your ink should i purchase your ink to fill the machine up before okay do not purchase my ink for that if you're getting an F570, this is not a converted printer. It is a sublimation printer, which means Epson has made sublimation ink for that printer. The firmware is made for that printer. I do not recommend anyone who is using the 170 or the F570 to purchase anybody's third party inks. Their inks are what, like before the pandemic and all this, you know, all the like the inflation. Um, they were $18 a bottle. Now I want to say they're maybe like $21 a bottle. Yes, it's $5 more, like, well, a little under, a little under $5 more than like what we sell ours for, but it doesn't make any sense to take the chance of your colors just being completely off when they make a sublimation ink for it. All the other ones, they don't make sublimation ink for it because they're not meant to be sublimation printers. So we, as third-party vendors, we have sourced ink that has been tested to match the color profiles of pigment ink printers. Um, and that can be put into any Epson printer because Epson printers are heat free. So for actual sublimation printers, I don't recommend it. Um, the only one, and because it's just so, it's so cost effective to just buy their bottles. Now, Sawgrasses are a bit different because those are really, 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 really pricey. So once you are outside of your uh, warranty for it, you can get a third-party cartridge to save on money. But for the EcoTank large format 570, it's just not worth it to buy third-party inks. Now, if you want to, you can. You're just going to pour it in there after you use theirs. They're going to give you Four, I mean, two sets. I'm gonna say four. They're gonna give you two sets of ink when you buy that. So that ink's gonna last you a good little minute. Um, she says, using it right now. I love yours. Oh, good morning. All right. Um, let's see. Any other comments? 
Um, I have a small Epson printer, but I don't know how to work it. Do you offer classes? Yes, I do. So we have um, my, I'm here almost every other day uh, doing different, so you can check out my content. I have several years on the Honestly Speaking YouTube channel. Um, you're on Facebook. So under Silicon Anonymous, I have like years and years and, well, I'm not going to say that. I deleted most of it. Uh, but on my YouTube, I have years and years of content. You can do that. I also have a um, summation for beginners where I break down so much of the basic information that most people don't really go into. It is very, very detailed. Understanding why your colors come out the way they do. Understanding what you can press to and what you can't. Um, understanding programs. I, it's just so much information in my uh, submission for beginners and business. Yeah. Well, Void your warranty for any of the Epson printers. So, I mean, it's sublimation ink. They're really not going to be able to tell that much of a difference between like theirs. Like, I mean, once they get it, maybe, but it's still sublimation ink. It's not that much of a difference. And I guarantee you, like Epson's not testing that to see if it's like if it is. And when it's in the in the system, I have both because I have a set of the Epson ink because I tested that in my Epson 7720. You really can't tell the difference other than the black. Their black has more of a bluish tone to it. Um, so we're not talking about maintenance for a printer. So I cannot answer this. I want to keep it where it's as close to like just talking about the tacky paper as possible. Um, I really appreciate your honesty. Um, I'll do an, I'll do a separate video. I'll come back. I'll do a general Q and A. Now, where are y'all at when I'm doing my general Q and A's? I'll come back, come right back. I'll come right at this. I'll do a general, a general Q and A. The name of my sub, uh, my YouTube is the exact same name that you're on. So Sillaholics Anonymous. Um, and then the name of our product line, honestly speaking, S P I N K I N G. So it's a play on words. I speak honestly, but it's a play on words with the ink. So you're either going to go to honestly speaking on YouTube or Sillaholics Anonymous. Sillaholics Anonymous is going to teach you more so about using uh, Silhouette Studio to design and everything else for sublimation and other things. And honestly speaking, there are several videos mixed in. It's not all, it's not an all sublimation channel. I've done so many other things so you can get a lot of information from um, there. Hey, are you the one that just commented in the Broward group about looking for someone to teach you how to use the printer? Because your, your profile picture looks familiar. Um, I will be doing some live classes in um, July here in South Florida. Okay, so I love the tacky paper. Any other questions about the tacky paper? I'm going to do a quick review for anyone that's just coming on. But if you have specific questions, feel free to let me know. All right, so quick review time. What is tacky summation paper? It is a paper that has a temporary adhesive. Oh, I know. I kept this here for a reason. It has a temporary adhesive on it. And I've done, I'm right now, I'm not doing like a full on demo. I have tons and tons of videos. I knew the informational part of this was going to be fairly long. So I'm not doing like a full on demo. I have videos for that. I'll come back, put them in the uh, comment section, like the direct links, and you can go check out those videos and just see how it works. Um, but it has a temporary adhesive or tack on it that is activated by heat and pressure and you cannot have any moisture in your fabric. So for um, this, you have to preheat. Whereas with, you probably see my videos, fast dry, I do not preheat. If you want the actual tack, you must preheat. And once you press it, it's gonna stick to it. And it, the uh, goal of it is to help minimize ghosting uh, that will occur from your paper moving once your heat press lifts up. If your paper moves because you are either hesitating on your heat press or let's say you did not bother to check your pressure and you put it down and you're lifting it back up because you now have to adjust it and it did not tack, if it moves before the heat gets to it, what, like our paper starts to release immediately. So if it starts, like you kind of get close to it, it starts to release and then it moves then you might get some ghosting. 
it only really prevents it um, at the end process. So if it goes straight down, it's going to be stuck to your fabric. And that way it's not going to shift and move. Even if you have an auto press, you have too much pressure, it's not going to stick to it. The tack happens after you press. Okay. Um, and like I said, it prevents shifting to minimize ghosting. What do I use it for? Me personally, I use it for oversized things because I'm pressing in sections. If you didn't catch the video when I did the big old baby stats blanket, I have also done, um, let me see if I can find it real quick. I doubt I'll be able to find it on my phone real quick. Um, but I did like a big old family bank. I'm actually about to do another one for my mother-in-law. Um, I'm also about to do one for my grandma. Uh, let's see. Let me go to gallery, albums, uh, sublimation, 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 sublimation. Um, oh gosh, it's not there. Oh, here it is. Sub blanket. I actually gave it its, its own album. So, oh wait. So when I'm doing large blankets like this, because I have to move around my easy press, I prefer to use tacky paper. That way it's stuck in that one section um, and I can overlap it and keep moving and I don't have to worry about it shifting. So I'll use it for like things like this. And there is the print. You can see the, it turns yellow. And that's like the adhesive heating up. Um, and here's like another, another view of it. And let's see if I can find the, the baby stat one real quick. Because I don't think that one is in its own album. Um, I'm going to try and find that real quick. I right, quick, quick, quick like. Uh, where is the baby stat? Um, now, no, I did not do that that far back. That was somewhat kind of recent. And I know I took pictures of it because I posted them online. Um, oh, come on. Seriously? Where is this thing? Oh, here it is. All right. Well, so this baby blanket was also done because it's also in sections. So the rolls make it to where I only have to, like I print out, like I think it's like maybe three sections for this. And I have a video. This I did live. So I showed me pressing it. Um, had it on a table or on my floor, have my easy press and I have at it. I don't try and do that one with the, um, I don't try to do that one with the heat press cause it's just too big. Um, here are like, here's the paper after you can see like my marks from my easy press. So actually it was only two. So I only needed to use two pieces. It was probably the full 47 inches. So uh, 13 by 47 and you can see what that looks like and I did do a live video pressing it so you can check that video out um, here it is before that's the paper before I pressed it okay and that is tape that's two pieces taped together so I like to use it for things like that I use it for my graduation stoles because I just print it in one long piece um, if I have something that is like a lot of smaller items, like when we were doing masks and I was doing a bunch of masks, I will print that off on there because I can print more than one at a time on the long rolls. So for stuff like that, when I did like my grandmother's, I pressed that. Um, I uh, printed those out on the submission paper roll just so that it can print out more at a time. Um, I use them for my crowns my graduation crowns i'm gonna find that real quick um sublimation 
So my senior crowns, this is glitter card stock. And because it is, I think, 24 inches long, I don't want to piece. I've I've pieced together before as well, but the rolls just make it so much easier. And because we don't carry the rolls in fast dry, I've used the tacky paper on that, right? So I use it like for stuff like that. Of course, all over shirts. Um, I just took a picture of a shirt that I did. Where is it? So, of course, all over shirts. The little rag I did with the tacky. Um, the tumbler was not with the tacky paper. Okay. Um, and like I said, some people just use it for regular shirts. I'm not one of those people. I don't use it for my regular shirts. I like the fast dry. Um, so, yeah. Fabrics and textiles only. It's not ideally made for hard substrates. Can you use it? Yes. Is it going to fully stick? Not on most substrates. I, I want to say I did a video and I left a set of tacky sheets in there. And I want to say it was the Christmas, the cheer Christmas ornament one. That may have been tacky paper. But I think it stuck to it a little bit. And I've done some demo ones just to show you like you can press it to it, but it's not meant to stick to it. It does not help with your tumblers like to avoid the ghost line because it's because it doesn't have stick immediately like to it. So it's not going to help with that. Those type of things, the tacky or the sticky does not help at all. Tacky and sticky is technically the same thing. People just use different terminology for it. Um, you can use it with any of the printers. Just make sure that you are cleaning your rollers because it has the coating. It's not going to dry. The ink isn't going to dry as fast. So you will have to clean your rollers more often when using it. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and then also if you want to note which side is which, I recommend like if you take the cover sheet out, write tacky on there, write print side or back side so you'll know which package is which if you have both of ours. Um, we are looking to add the, because the newer workforce printers only use, um, they only use, like in the front tray, you can only do 11 inches. We are considering the 11 inches. I know some of you guys use the 17 with the 2720. Y'all got to make sure that y'all actually going to buy it. I can't go and buy it if it's only a few people. Like y'all have to be in these F570 groups saying, hey, go to Honestly Speaking. They have the paper. They have it on the rolls because if we go and we buy it and y'all aren't buying it, that's not good business for us because then we're just going to be sitting on a bunch of product. So the 11 inch is in immediate like plans the 17 not so much because we do have the 24 so you guys could always use that um i know some people they say like oh i don't want to waste like the extra paper but just build it into your cost guys this is why you also need my pricing class sometimes you guys are stressing over little things like extra paper or this and the third build that into your cost to where you are not losing money um so right now maybe not so much but after my experience this past weekend, uh, we will add, but it will only be for local because it's going to probably cost an arm and a leg to ship that out. So as of right now, it would only be for local, but we are going to carry the 36 and the 44. It worked great for grad stoles and rugs. Yep. Oh, I've used it for rugs. Um, I actually have one of the Home Depot rugs that I'm about to do sometime this week as well. All right, so that's all the information. Hopefully that answered all of your you guys' questions on tacky summation paper. Um, if you have any additional questions, please leave it as a comment below. You can find the tacky summation paper um, as well as our fast dry on our website, shop.hse365.com. We have all standard sizes available. We also have multi-packs. That's going to save you a little bit more coins. Um, and this is the tacky and then the fast dry looks exactly the same way as far as what the options are tacky has the tacky banner fast dry does not have that banner all right and of course our sublimation ink 
Pigment Ink. This is where you can sign up for my classes. Essential Silhouette Studio, if you're wanting to learn to design in Silhouette Studio, um, is a great course to take. Be on the lookout for um, our T-shirt academy, our um, Party Favors Academy, and then, like I said, June, July, August, we're doing profit uh, pricing and profits for those three months um, in my creative business. I'm trying to figure out if I can separate those where you guys can have access to just those three months and not the entire creative business for those who don't want it. But the creative business program, there's a lot of helpful uh, classes and live sessions that we've done within those. So it's going to be worth it regardless. All right. So again, thank you guys so very much. Until next time, come right back. I'll do another general Q&A to answer some of you guys' questions. Y'all better come with questions. Don't have me do a general Q&A and y'all come over asking questions. All right. But I should talk to you guys later. Until next time, have a great one. Continue to unlock your creativity and be incredible. Peace.